scarlet blaze. Torment of the ego and lion. Edelgard succeeds in containing Ayer's insurgency, and while she is concerned by the absence of the nefarious Tallis, she prepares her army for the next step regardless. The time is nigh to crush the kingdom and central church's growing momentum and put an end to the war once and for all. I've gathered you here in Garrick Mark because the time has come. We are returning to the front. Oh yeah, I've been waiting to hear that forever. Let's go wreck things. For the next phase of our campaign, we'll be working with the Alliance's leader, Claude, to tighten our cordon around the kingdom. Rather than try to advance on the Western Front, we'll join forces with the Alliance and press in from the East. This means we'll be marching northeast from the monastery and infiltrating Galatea. I hope we can finally end it this time. I don't think I can deal with doubling back again. Agreed. This slog has slogged on long enough. Worry not, friends. I'll not be blindsided twice. I promise you that. We won't rest until all of Fodlan is united. We will fight tooth and nail for it, and we'll do so together. So, we're finally dusting off our armor and going somewhere, huh? You must really want to end this war if you're letting the two of us loose on the kingdom. Quite right, Captain Geralt. We will not accept anything less than the fall of the royal capital. You and your mercenaries will be marching with us. This is not a problem, I trust. Let's just say I have a history with someone at the capital and leave it at that. But if the time's come for me to sort that out, then so be it. In any case, we're ready to go, right, kid? We'll earn our keep. Gotta say, I'm excited to be fighting with you for a change. We made some headway on the Western Front once the Empire pulled its main force back. What does it matter when their Minister of Military Affairs still holds Aryan Road? Even if we were in a position to keep throwing troops at those walls, we're never going to crack them. But if we keep digging our heels in here, their main force will be on us again in no time. It appears they have already dealt with the insurrection at Fort Mercius. If they don't come at us from the west, they'll soon waltz right in from the east. Might I offer a suggestion, King Dimitri? Of course, Lady Rhea. We should retake Garrick Mark. It is the only way to reverse our current fortunes. If I call upon the Church's faithful, they will come running from every corner of Fodlan to liberate the monastery in the Goddess's name. With Garrick Mark under our control, we will be able to keep the Imperial Army in check. Additionally, it might convince some of the more fickle Alliance Lords to reconsider their loyalties. I mean no disrespect, Lady Rhea, but this proposal hardly seems... There is more. As you know, the Bishop of the Southern Church is currently seated at the Monastery. If we remove him, it reminds the world anew that Archbishop Rhea is the rightful head of the Church of Saros. I believe this will shake some of the more devout Adrestian lords from their Emperor's grip. While their faith may waver now, Adrestia is still the cradle of the Church of Seros. There are yet many pious believers among their nobility. If we can pull them to our side, it may shift the war back in our favor. We should strike while the iron is hot. I will get the word out at once. Hold, Lady Rhea. While I now concede that your plan to retake the monastery has some merit, I must ask that you alert no one. And why not? I need only say the word, and an army of believers will flock to our cause. Yes, 
And the moment the enemy spies people flooding in from across Hill and Dale, they'll realize what we're planning and bolster their defenses. You believe their defenses are mightier than the faith of the people? By the goddess, have our enemies truly become so powerful? In that case, what do you propose? We entrust the eastern lines to houses Karen and Galatea, and ride in mass toward Arian Road. The enemy will think we intend to assail the Silver Maiden, but instead we break east. East? Then we'll be attacking the monastery through the Valley of Torment. I get your thinking now. If we attack from the west, Aryan Road would be at our backs, and the Empire could box us in. Very well. I have no objections. My church members will assist in guiding your soldiers through ALL. The monastery is holy and precious to us, and by the name of the goddess, I swear, it will be ours again. Good. Then I'll ready the troops. Lady Rhea, Sedeth, I place all of our futures in your hands. Hmm. Perhaps I will ask Edelgard to handle this matter. As for this one, it seems as though I have no choice but to do it myself. Uh, if only I could spare the time. Hey, Ferdinand. You should probably think about getting some sleep. That's an order, actually, from Hubert. But I agree with him. My apologies. My list of responsibilities has grown rather unwieldy of late. Exhausted as I may be, I will be done here shortly. You need not fret. Ferdinand, come on. I thought you were supposed to be giving everything your all. If you're really that tired, how are you gonna be in any shape for what's coming tomorrow? Go on and give your all to a good night's sleep. Ah, uh, yes, you are right. How could I, of all people, not realize the error in my ways? I shall take that to heart. Glad to hear you're coming around. Anyway, good night. Tomorrow's another big day. Wait. Hmm? What's up? Uh, never mind. Thank you for the concern. I will be sure to convey my gratitude to Hubert later as well. Don't forget. He's really worried about you, you know. Is he now? Usually he finds any occasion to criticize me. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Is that so? And here I thought he had taken a shine to you. If he has, he sure doesn't show it. Ah, before I forget, what would you think about coordinating our schedules tomorrow? I've been so absorbed in my work of late, we've scarcely had the chance to spend time together. I have been pouring all of my effort into rising early, training, eating, and in the process, I have neglected our friendship. As fellow advocates of giving one's all to all of life's pursuits, I say we work together to draw out each other's dormant potential. Works for me. My schedule's pretty light these days. It'll be good to spend some time together. But just so we're clear, we are not on the same page with this whole giving or all thing. Splendid! This should serve as all the motivation I need to continue pressing onward undaunted. And with that settled, I believe it is time for us to devote ourselves fully to a tranquil slumber. Come, our lump-riddled camp beds await our zealous efforts. Okay, this time you are joking, right? It's seriously impossible to tell with you sometimes. La 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 How was that? I, uh, yeah, good. Still the same reaction, huh? 
Sorry, me and singing just don't mix very well. Though, it did make me feel warm inside. Kinda like I was a kid again, with my mom. Hey, you do get it! That was a lullaby from a long, long time ago. Nowadays, nobody remembers the lyrics, though. Or sings it to their children, for that matter. A lullaby, huh? I guess that's why it took me back the way it did. But wait, if nobody knows the words, how are you so sure that's even what it is? Just from how it sounds? Well, there was this scholar who researched it a few years ago and said as much. Couldn't tell you if they were right, though. Huh. Honestly, I kind of like that it didn't have any words. That way it can hit you straight in the heart without all that lyrics and meaning stuff getting in the way. I'm glad to hear you giving music a little more thought now. And I'm glad I've had so many chances to listen to you sing. Your voice touches people, Dorothea, even if they don't have the knowledge to really appreciate the high-level art of it. I mean, look at me! Bottom of the barrel, and you still practically move me to tears. Oh, come now, don't talk about yourself like that. <sighs> it doesn't really bother me. And I'm not wrong, am I? No birth parents, no real background to speak of, the whole wandering merc gig. It is what it is. <laughs> That's quite the positive attitude. I'll have to try a little bit of that myself sometime. In the meantime, I've once again been able to rethink my singing thanks to you. I lost much of my emotion about the craft during my time as a diva, but I can feel it coming back now. <laughs> you really are incredible, you know that? How do you mean? I don't know, there's just something beautiful about the way you speak. It's like your thoughts just come out of your mouth fully formed, almost perfect, then find their way straight into people's hearts. Probably has something to do with all the training you did to become a diva, and all the training you've continued doing since. Meanwhile, here I am, struggling to even make proper sentences when I try to talk about your singing. Thank you for the kind words. It, it makes me feel a lot better hearing you say those things about me. But, for the record, I don't think you're bad with words at all. Even your little speech now was the definition of smooth. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were trying to flirt with me. <laughs> So in the end, it seems we're no closer to unveiling the truth about your powers. You can say that again. At this rate, the war will be over and done with by the time we make any headway. That would admittedly be cause for celebration, at least. Your power, like that of a crest, is undoubtedly meant to be wielded as an instrument of war. And as the tides of battle recede, your chances of encountering a life-or-death situation grow slimmer and slimmer. Therefore, you'll be forced to use your power less and less often. And that's probably for the best. Why is that such a good thing? Because we still don't know enough about its effects, both during and after its use. You know, they say even a hero's relic wielded by its corresponding crest bearer will still drain a portion of that person's life. It's reasonable to suspect your power could have a similar impact on both your body and mind. Hey, you're starting to scare me here. Honestly, I was just planning on going back to being a regular old mercenary after the war ends. Can't really imagine life without a blade in my hand, you know? I should have guessed. I imagine your expert services will be in high demand even once the conflict is over. In fact, Edelgard herself seemed keen on asking you to settle down in Imbar to support the Empire. Really? Not that I'm not flattered, of course, but putting down roots isn't really my thing. No, I suppose not. Though I have to admit, 
It would put my mind at ease to have you by my side once this is all over. You want me by your side? Would you care to elaborate on that? Consider the possibilities. A seemingly unarmed attendant who's able to produce a sword in the blink of an eye. It would be a great crime deterrent, don't you think? You'd prove quite handy on my travels. I figured that's what you meant. A pure Linhart answer, if I've ever heard one. But how's that any different from a regular bodyguard? Seems like you could just hire one of those and be done with it. Maybe so. But I don't want to be spending the rest of my life with a random bodyguard, do I? Hold on, what? Oh, well, look at the time. It seems I've forgotten an urgent matter I need to attend to. Bye for now. Wait, Linhart, come back! Hubert, what do you make of the Ashen Demon? Aside from having proven to be both impossibly powerful and a constant thorn in our side, a correction was a constant thorn in our side. I must admit, the little terror has put in some fine work for the Empire recently. We're fortunate to have gained so powerful an ally. Why do you bring this up, Your Majesty? Is there something on your mind? I'm not entirely sure myself. My apologies, Hubert. Pay me no mind. Like as not, I am overthinking the situation. Surely you realize that telling me to pay this no mind only gives me greater cause for concern? <laughs> I didn't mean to worry you. I'm simply having trouble putting this feeling into words. I just felt... I don't know, as if something was drawing me to the Ashen Demon. I wonder, could it be the influence of my crest? Your crest? Now I am truly becoming concerned. Forget it. Whatever it means, we don't need to find out right away. We have a war to win first. As you wish, Your Majesty. So long as you realize, I will be taking the liberty to investigate this most thoroughly. I thought you might say as much. Do as you must. Honestly, Hubert, you never change, do you? When I emerged from beneath the palace all those years ago, you acted as though nothing had happened. Do not worry, you said. I took the liberty to investigate while you were indisposed. For the record, my blood was boiling. However, as there were others present, I kept still my tongue. I could not risk showing my anger, lest they find a way to turn it against you. My role to play is the cold, crafty, unreadable servant. I am happy with the casting. So let us leave it at that. I'm certain you are. But just once I'd like to see our roles reversed. Your Majesty, you cannot possibly be serious. <sighs> not in the slightest. I'm well aware I am not cut out for the kind of work you do. Nonsense. There is nothing beyond your capability. That said, I prefer you best when you are the one in charge. Command me as you see fit. No matter how daunting or impossible the task may be, I will come through every time without fail. Thank you, Hubert. It's good to know that I can always rely on you. Constance, I think I am starting to have more understanding of you. Both parts of you are the true you. The part that cannot be accepting is existing alongside the part that can. These two are always fighting inside you. It is very difficult. I would venture to say that you have described me most aptly. 
There is still much about myself I have yet to understand. But the idea that the two parts of me exist in a state of conflict is most intriguing. Before, you were telling me there was no point in having conflict over the past. You were letting go of the past to be living in the present. Your words were touching my heart. Yes, I do suppose I may have said something to that effect. How mortifying. But then you fled before I could be responding. That was showing me that you have difficult feelings for me after all. This is also one part of you battling with the other, I think. It is entirely possible that such is the case. As I could never hide the truth from you, I must admit I found you somewhat intimidating. Despite my springing the topic on you without warning, you stood strong and listened, and were even gracious enough to discuss it afterward. You dazzled me, and I do not respond well to dazzling. I am weak and pathetic as I am now. No, that is not weakness. It is balance. The weak part is existing, so the other part can be strong for you. Are you not agreeing? Why ever would you think that? Because I am the same. I am also having a weak part. Like you, I am always pretending that the past is not bothering to me. But my father is dead, as are many of my people. This gives me great sorrow, and I am unable to be accepting. The weak part of me is winning. Why is it that I am still living, when so many others had to be dying? That is a thought that I ponder often myself. For what purpose am I even here? Why is it that I am the only one left to suffer? Is there anything left for me to live for? All I feel is the pain of the people I have lost. But I know now that someone like you, a person as dazzling as the other part of me, also shares that same pain. Of course. May I be so bold as to ask what it is that gives you solace? My brother and sister back home. They're still very small, but thinking of them always provides me with strength. If I am not able to be claiming the throne, they are likely to be killed. Bridget expects me to be a strong queen, a warrior. Only I can be improving our relations with Fodlin. I must be rising to the challenge. Where are you finding your solace? I take peace in the dream the other part of me still believes in. The dream that one day, House Nouvelle will be restored to its former glory. As unlikely as this seems, I find I am unable to discard it entirely. Then let us both be taking heart. We will be living and we will be fighting. We are sharing a past of sorrow. But together, we can be overcoming it and walking on towards tomorrow. You have my deepest thanks, Petra. Alone, I may never have found the courage I need, but with you beside me, there is hope. Hmm. Hmm. I had no idea these grew outside the village. Oh, um, uh, hi, Happy. Got some fruit there? Yep. I used to eat them all the time when I was a kid. Care for some? Huh? Oh, um, thanks. I'll just have one. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's sour, but also sweet. They're my favorite. With all the edible plant life around here, you never need to worry about being hungry. Well, I suppose I've seen edible plants around, but are there really all that many? Sheesh. I need to get out more. I didn't even notice. But you must have noticed. You raised them. 
like the carnivorous one I saw earlier? But I don't eat my carnivorous plants. I'm sorry. Did we or did we not have a long conversation about how delicious they are? <laughs> In fact, I was just thinking that the jug-shaped one would be divine if we stuffed it with grains and... Uh, Bernie Bee? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just imagining you eating my adorable little carnivorous plants. Which I have done. A lot, actually. Haven't you? Of course not! Why would I eat my plant babies? Because they're delicious. Okay, that's it. I'm going to cook you up a carnivorous plant feast right now. Come on. Wait, no! I haven't said yes to this! Here you go. Dig in. This is the one with the leaves that act like a mouth. Uh, but instead of bugs, I stuffed it with grilled meat. Oh no! Poor little guy! But... It would be an insult to its little plant spirit if I just threw it out, so... <laughs> well, do you like it? It's my favorite, so I hope it ends up being your favorite, too. Bernie Bee? Was it so delicious you passed out? Okay, come on. Stop kidding around. Hello? I can see you drooling, Bernie B. Are you even listening to me, Linhart? I know what I saw. Oh, I heard you the first time. I just think you misunderstood what your eyes were telling you. The guy didn't have a head. What could I possibly misunderstand about that? From a distance, many things could resemble the indistinct shape of a headless torso. It's irrational to assume it was a ghost. There must be a simpler and more scientific explanation. And you'll never convince me otherwise, no matter how much you howl. So best to just let it go. You're being real stubborn about this. Wouldn't it be easier to just mumble something about how he might be right and move on? A fair point. But you see... Father? Well, this is unexpected. You too, Father? What are you doing here? I had some matters to discuss with Her Majesty and prefer to do so in person. And I came to consider the continued unrest in the East of the Empire with the court. And you thought it might be nice to pay your dear sons a visit while you were in the area. A sensible conclusion. Death awaits around every corner in these times. Each visit could be our last. You are a fountain of positivity, my son. We're not just here to bandy words. There's a fight waiting for us, and a lot of you are going to help. Uh, all of us? He can't possibly be counting me among those slated to help, can he? Father? I was against the idea, but as you might imagine, Count Burglies would have none of it. You know, some of the former Prime Minister's rebel sympathizers escaped, yes? Well, we've tracked them down in a town near to here. Leopold means to mount an attack and wipe them out in one fell swoop. With just us? I hope you have more troops on the way. Sorry, but this is all we've got. My army's engaging the kingdom on the Western Front, and Her Majesty's forces are busy with preparations for the next battle. Now come, we don't have much time. Right, got it. And what do you think will happen to us if we let the two of them go it alone and they end up dead, hmm? Oh, fine. As you said, it's not like we can talk the Count out of anything once he's set his mind to it. And Caspar is just as bad. 
That apple is so close to the tree, it may as well be part of the roots themselves. I assume we can count on you as well, friend. It will be a hard battle, and I cannot vouch for our safe return should you refuse. I don't see how I can say no when you put it like that. You're just as bad as Count Burglies in your own special way. You appear to have a bond of mutual trust. Nicely done, son. I'm not sure that's how I'd phrase it, but moving on. If we're going to do this thing, I suggest we move out and do it already. Yeah, if we don't hurry, Caspar and his dad will be drowning in bad guys before we even get our boots laced. Come on, we gotta catch up. See? I knew I could rely on you. Hmm. I get the feeling this is going to be quite the bother before it's all said and done. So much for catching the enemy unprepared. Though no matter, we'll wipe out what's left of this rebellion regardless. That rifle you caught outside of town certainly didn't help. Still, at least they've been drawn out. It's been a while since I fought alongside my father. Better step it up. Even more than you usually do? In that case, I'll try to keep out of your way. Are you kidding? My usual approach would get blasted away by my father's battle cry alone! A good point. I'll stay away from him as well. When did we two last fight side by side? During the Troubles in Enbar, perhaps? Quite recently, then. Hopefully things go better this time around. Your training is starting to pay off, son. You've become much more disciplined. Oh, now I feel his eyes watching my every move. Better not let him down. What's that noise? Are they onto us? It's not over. These bandits seem unrelated to the rebels. Still, we might as well deal with them. Mowing down weak enemies is so very dull. What say you, Caspar? Care to compete over which group can rack up more kills? You and Count Hevering versus the three of us? I like those odds! Or you can leave us out of your absurd contest entirely. Come on, Voldemar. You're falling behind. I don't know why you insist on this foolish competition, Leopold. You know full well I could never keep up with you. I'll take the lead, Caspar. Captain on you, Lidhart! You know better than to expect much. How's this? All right, that's one down. Come on, give me another. Can't we just have a nice, normal battle? Counting bodies is so tacky. More bandits over there, Baltimore. Work me in. Another one-man assault? My turn. Well, if that's what you want. A wise man is ever ready. Would you like to be warped as well, Caspar? I personally think it's a terrible idea, but I'll let you make your own decision. No thanks. I'm running on pure, clean Caspar power this time. We'll go on ahead to escort the prisoners. I think we knew this would be the result. Still, it's always good to try, yes? It seems someone's training has been lacking. Perhaps it's time we put these lads through their paces. What say you, Baltimore? So be it. I do not promise to match your intensity. Extra 
for special father Did training? You Count me in. Show me what you've learned. Every technique and talent. Hold no nothing back. Fight against the strongest man in the Empire? You got it. I'll give you all you can handle. Painful. Are you sure you have the right son? Because I'd much prefer to stay out of this. My force of will seems rather weak in the face of the might you display so casually. Sorry. You can tell your heart's not really in this. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna prove how strong I am! Well, good heart. Seeing as we're here, this will put you to the test also. Yes, you. And what exactly are you hoping to prove with this test of yours? It doesn't feel like I've posed much of a challenge to you. Sorry. I'm sorry. That was about what I expected. This will be amazing. I'll put in the effort if you do. Really? It's about time! Out of my way! Yes! Yes! Give me more! Ah, the vigor of youth! Let this battle be your proving ground! You have surpassed me, Caspar! Well fought! I am proud of you. Well, this day has been simply awful. Time for me to hurry home and fall into bed. Bed? It's still early. I bet my father has plenty more training in store for us. <laughs> so you finally bested your old man, huh? I'm proud of you, Kaspar. And Linhart? You've come a long way as well. Oh, and it puts my mind at ease to know these two have a companion like you around. Don't you agree, Baldemar? Any peace of mind I may have gained will doubtless be wiped out soon by more of your antics, Leopold. But yes, as one never knows what will happen on the battlefield, it is always good to have capable allies. Wow, did you hear that? My father isn't easily impressed, so you must have really knocked his greaves off back there. It's an honor to get complimented by such a renowned military mind. Ha! Well, if you ever want to test your might, you know where to find me. I don't think that was ever on the table. No? Well, that's disappointing. Anyway, here. A reward for all the work you put in. Consider this as a thank you for letting me drag you all on my little adventure. Hey, now we're talking. After all those years as a merc, I always expect some kind of reward after a tough battle. You throw yourself vigorously into the fray to help your friends, yet also keep a tight grip on the strings of your purse. You would make for a fine civil servant, if you ever had the inclination. Tempting, but I think I'd rather fight people than paperwork. Gals like me aren't cut out for the civilized life. I prefer to let my sword do the talking. Wait, you have a talking sword? What? Uh, of course not. <laughs> if only you trained your mind with the same vigor as your muscles, my son. Hey, speaking of minds, where's Linhart? He's been awfully quiet through all this. Hmm. Did he seriously just pass out? Hmm? Oh, are we going? 
Wow, look at that. I have a second wind. Just enough energy to get me home and into bed. 